Shake that ass, bitch. Shake that ass, bitch. Real fucking hot girl shit, bitch. Come to the club and get a crap on your and shit, bitch. <laughs>
it often takes precedence as the most important and prioritized dream. And you oftentimes see a lot of women putting their other dreams and their other uh, goals and what they want for them for themselves and for their future on the back burner for the prospect of a marriage and a husband and everything. <clears throat> and, you know, not even just a marriage and a husband, but a family putting their putting what they want and their dreams on the back burner for kids and things like that. And so we finally got to see something that was very, um, very raw, very real life, something that wasn't so much so fantasy, but something that like we see so much in parallels and her just having to really navigate through that, you know, and seeing seeing her give advice from her mom who like, you know, is part of the old age, is very much so, like, husband-centered, ha having somebody take care of you and things like that. She was, like, gung-ho for, okay, you need to leave it alone, you need to drop it. And I'm not gonna lie, I was too, because I didn't realize just how much I had internalized that type of mindset of, like, you know, you should be giving up your dreams for a man type of thing. Not even, like, for a man, but just, like, you know, if you want marriage and you want the person that you want, then, you know, and honestly and truly, now that I'm thinking about it, it wasn't even about Colin that I was saying that I was hoping that she would let Cressida take, um, take credit for Lady Whistledown. It was more so because the queen was on her head. And so <laughs> I didn't want her to get called by the queen. So I was like, girl, just let Cressida take fucking credit. But, um, yeah, no, so you see, like, her mom giving her that advice and her, like, you know, really internalizing it like you know you're really lucky to to be getting married for love don't let it go to waste because of your dreams and I feel like that's a really shitty way to look at it but that is a very normalized way to look at it you know do you want a man that will forever love you a man that will forever care about you a man that will take care of you or do you want do you want dreams do you want to be self-fulfilled and the whole theme of this was if you find a man who truly loves you and truly cares about you they won't ask you to sacrifice your dreams and your hopes and the things that you wanted for yourself to feel better about yourself to feel fulfilled within your life they won't ask you to give that up just so that you could be a housewife just so that you could be their wife you know what I mean so I really appreciated that all right, back on the camera. So anyway, um, where was I? I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, so I I liked it well enough. Um, what else happened? Oh, I think Eloise is finally getting her lesbian love story. Mm -hmm. Everybody applaud. And then Benedict, I knew he was the bi one. I was like confused for a little bit so I'm like well at first because when he was first introduced he was like you know what a man and so I was like damn I thought they had a gay one <laughs> I was like confused you know as if bi people don't exist as if I'm not one of them but um yeah no and then him being in a throuple makes so much sense so much sense and so I didn't understand like when that man wanted him i was like yeah. mm -hmm. this makes so much sense because he's like just so free-spirited he's the he's the one to be like you know yeah no my girlfriend's boyfriend is blah 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 we fucked together last night it was fun it was a blast uh, you know i don't think you know i I am kind of sad. <clears throat> I am kind of sad and disappointed that he didn't want to continue the relationship with her. Um, because he was like, you know, wanting it to be a throuple. Because you could tell he liked her. And I feel like that was just kind of inconsistent. That like he didn't 
want to continue the relationship like it was kind of consistent within the storyline because he was literally just talking about how happy he was with her and how happy like you know th how great things had been with her and so it was just very confusing when he told her like you know i don't really know what i want because it's like well you just you wanted a relationship like you you were you know meeting her her friend you didn't know that that was like her boyfriend you thought you were finally meeting what she considered family and you were okay with it because you thought that was your girlfriend you know what i mean so i, I was like so confused when he said like i don't really know what i want right now because it's like what like i was yeah anyway so that was interesting um I want to circle back around to Colin and Penelope because I still stand on the fact that I feel like their love story was rushed. Not on Penelope's end, obviously, because Penelope always had feelings for Colin. But, you know, Colin had never shown any type of like romantic interest in Penelope before, because if he did, he wouldn't have chosen um, her cousin. If he actually had like any type of romantic interest, he would have chosen her before or at least like you know shown interest in her before but he didn't at all whatsoever and so um I still stand by the fact that I feel like they should have just had more time to flesh it out it was a little rushed like I said not within Penelope's and obviously we saw that she was like vying for him wanting to be with him for the entire series but we never once saw Colin reciprocate that <clears throat> not until after they fucking made out like even when they were hanging out at the beginning of this season it was never like um there was never any inklings that he had any type of romantic feelings for her it was a very gave like whenever you're reading a romance novel and like the 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 author of the book doesn't really know how to write and so it just kind of gives like a like a cheap shot type of thing of like yeah, no, we had to find some way for them to have some type of, like, physical intimacy. So it's her literally, like, fucking begging for him to kiss her. And then next thing you know, after that physical intimacy, he falls in love with her. A man who's, who was literally writing a book about going to France and being a whore for an entire summer. Fucking bitches getting money. Came back, was fucking bitches getting money. You expect me to believe that he fell in love with somebody after one kiss? like come on now so it was just it that was like very unrealistic as far as like the writing went and yeah it just it wasn't it, it genuinely just didn't make sense it didn't and you can't convince me that it did it just it didn't it was like I said it was a very cheap shot it was very just like well we got to find some way to get the ball moving instead of it being an authentic type of love and so it it made their love seem or made the love that he had for her seem less like actual love and more like lust and jealousy whenever she started seeing um lord Devlin. and so it was just i i don't know i hope like which i know netflix won't do it just because like netflix is too headstrong on that eight episode model but it would do them such a great service and such a great favor to the Bridgerton writers if they got more than eight more than eight episodes because something like a romance like you you can rush something like well, you can't really rush something like Stranger Things, but something like a, a thriller or something, it can it can move a little bit more fast paced. But the whole point of a romance is the slow burn of it all. And so when you get rid of the slow burn, especially a love story be that is like that does the friends to lovers trope, it actually needs to be a slow burn. And so if you're going to do it, do it right or don't do it at all. And they didn't allocate enough time to fully flesh out the feelings on Colin's side for it to be a successful, well thought out, beautiful friends to lovers storyline. And like I said, they had to take the cheap way out and just have them 
kiss because she's begging for the fucking kiss. And it just, yeah. See, and it's, it's not like I'm saying anything that's brand new because even he said to her, I'm so sorry that I overlooked you all these years and blah, 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 blah. In the, in the, like in the show, he said that to her. I think it was like what episode six or some shit. No, it was episode four. He said, or episode five, when he blew her back out, he told her that. And so it was just like, like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So I don't understand, like, why everybody was, you know, jumping down my throat because I said it made no sense. My Everybody was jumping down other people's throats when they said it made no sense, like, how rushed it was because, sure, Penelope was always in love with Colin, but we never, ever, ever, not once got any type of, like, inkling, hint, idea, no looks, no glances, no nothing that showed that Colin had feelings for Penelope. Never. We never did. Not until they fucking made out. Even like before that, it was still just on a friendly level. And maybe that's where people are seeing that his like acting is not that good. So it doesn't portray it well. Is because like, you know, a better actor would be able to show that a little bit earlier on. But I don't know. Like I said, I don't like feel one way or the other too strongly about his acting. I feel like he's just a regular actor. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it, yeah, it was it was a little rushed as far as like Colin's end of like you know, it's, it's a lot. You just you have a sex dream about you make out with her, have a sex dream about her, and now you want to marry her. Like, how did we get here? How did we get here? Especially because you are like such a playboy. Like, you know, you could have just hit it, you know, if that was like, I don't know. I don't know. Which I wouldn't want for her. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Like that would make more sense as far as like who he is as a person or who he was as a person, you know, he's literally like having threesomes and like telling paying prostitutes to fuck each other. Like, come on now. This man is a sexual, sexual deviant. And you want me, you want me to believe that he fell in love with his childhood best friend because they made out. And he had a sex dream about her. Okay, right, right, sure. Anyway, so that's that on that. Um, um, who else? Who else? Francesca. So adorable. So adorable. Um, her mama said, but her, but for my love, I need a riot bitch. Shout out to Miss Summer Walker. Okay. She was like, Oh no, I don't know. He don't seem too in love with you, girl. He, he not, he not making no noise for you the way I need him to make noise for my daughter. And I love that he peeped. <laughs> I love that. Like the brothers gave him like the advice he needed. What the fuck is that on the back of my neck? Anyway. I love that like the brothers gave him the advice he needed of like how to win the mom over and shit. She's used to the the riot love. She's not used to the love that he was trying to give, the love that Francesca was, you know, receiving and everything. And I love that he was like, you know, we don't always have to be quiet and still and stoic. We can we can do spontaneous things. Let's dance. Let's dance. I love that. That was so cute. They're so cute. And like I said, Eloise and her little lesbian love story coming to the front and center. I definitely think she's about to uh, be schizzering with uh, with Kill Martin's cousin. <laughs> All these alliterations, lesbian love story with Kill Martin's cousin. Yeah, it's giving. It's giving that definitely. I definitely think they're about to be hunching because. Like somebody said, Eloise gives, she, she gives Safik and she, she gives Safik and I absolutely agree. She does not give straight woman at most, at most she gives bi, you know? So I am ready to see that lesbian love story and see if they're actually, See how they're going to navigate that. You know, I feel like Eloise is next up on the chopping block as far as like um, love stories go. And I want to see how 
she navigates that. You know what I mean? Please, bitch, do not try to cap on me. Like, I ain't thought how to sell naturally. All right, let me do my eyebrows. My eyebrow. Lady Danbury and her brother having their little beef, their little spat, you know? I think that was well enough. I honestly think that was just another, like, storyline that just wasn't really needed like i said in the last video and part one there were entirely too many storylines going on at once and the last thing they needed to do was add another one um yeah i didn't really care for it don't really have any notes just you know sad happy happy sad melancholy tragic whatever um oh yeah kate got pregnant congrats to her Congrats to her. I'm so happy and I'm happy that like um, Anthony is a great husband. Anthony is a great husband. I wish uh, that other man, the one that was with Daphne was still there. Like I, I wish like the first couple that was on Bridgerton was like more open to like making appearances and things. Cause I don't know, it feels like, um, feels like those love is blind relationships where you see they got married and everything then you just never hear from them again and then you find out that they got divorced like immediately after the show ended <laughs> i don't know it was just i'm like where are they i miss them you know oh that's what i needed but yeah no i'm happy he i'm happy that he was like you know if you want we can go to india and like have our have our child be born there and you know blah 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 i was like oh that is so cute and then also something i'm confused about how did i feel like they were just like throwing shit together at the end of the show because how did penelope's son come out the same age as her sister's daughters did she get pregnant like on the first fuck or something because i'm so confused like was that like you know supposed to be a year out like when was all that supposed to happen did she write that last letter like months after because why is she like having the baby like she has the baby baby born everything baby look old baby look at least like three months old and the last like letter as from her as lady whistledown is published like does she take a long ass break or something like i'm so confused how they got that how they you know got that pamphlet with her saying like you know this is me finally coming out as penelope this is my coming out story <laughs> like i'm so confused like did she did she just take some time to herself or like what like i don't know yeah i'm, I'm confused about that storyline if anybody understands it can somebody comment down below like am i am i tripping or what you know yeah and then also i guess i forgot which is also why i don't know if y'all saw <clears throat> bridgerton season four is gonna take at least two years to fucking film and i'm like for eight episodes for eight episodes it's gonna take two years to film eight episodes and all you got to do is just put on some ball gowns and y'all use the same sets. Like it's literally y'all just be filming in the house and then sometimes a random ass ballroom like and I'm sure they use the same ballroom every time. So I'm just like for eight episodes it's going to take you two years to film eight episodes. That's ridiculous that's ridiculous they are in bondage <laughs> they are in bondage free the fucking bridgerton cast they are in bondage right now bro it's like marvel i know like i know them people that be working at the marvel studios be fucking tired because i know you do one movie for them niggas you got to do 11 movie for them niggas and it's like god damn I know that's how the uh, fucking euphoria people feel. That's why they was like, girl, I'm not about to wait on this damn bag. I'm going to go. The Stranger Things kids, they feel the same way. Imagine playing a fucking teenager and you're married. 
Millie Bobby Brown. I know you. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. You're supposed to be playing what? Like 16? And this girl is like, what, 22 now? And fucking married? Like, imagine. Imagine. Oh. Are they even supposed to be 16? Do they have a time jump like they do in anime? Or what? I don't even watch that show. Or is it like, you know, is she still supposed to be playing 13 years old at 22? It's a damn motherfucking shame. Netflix be having these people in fucking bondage. Y'all need to do better. Netflix, HBO. I understand sometimes. I understand why HBO be taking so long with Game of Thrones, you know, because it's, it's fucking Game of Thrones. They probably got like, you know, they got dragons and shit. They got to like really, really take their time, you know, for eight episodes. Ridiculous, wild out of like y'all are out of your fucking minds. Y'all are out of your mind. Anyway, I think my battery's about to die, so I'm gonna switch to my phone again. Sorry if, like, the quality is switching back and forth, you know, but I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. I'm working with what I got. Shout out to Mariah Carey. I'm gonna do the best with what I got. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, two years for eight episodes of a show that don't even use special effects is like insane, insane. And I feel like the reason, another reason why like it takes TV shows so fucking long to film nowadays and they only film a, a handful of fucking episodes is because they use a green screen for everything instead of actually using a set you know what i mean like for instance look at um abbott elementary they're able to film quick and they get all of they get like you know 20 something episodes a season and you know year after year they're coming they're coming out with it and it's because they actually use a real set they go to an actual school and film and record at the school Whereas like, you know, fucking Bridgerton, I feel like they probably use green screens. I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, then I really wanna know why the fuck it's taking them so long to, to film eight episodes. Eight, eight. Like, come on now. And that's why, that's another reason why people felt like Penelope and Colin's love story was fucking rushed because we don't remember shit that happened fucking we don't remember shit that happened fucking three years ago you know what i mean like come on now <sighs> how are how like how are we supposed to is it like a ploy to just get us to re-watch the last season every time a new season comes out so we can make sure we remember because if that's the case you're failing because i'm not gonna fucking re-watch the last season it's just ridiculous y'all it's ridiculous that's ridiculous. They need to go to hell. Netflix, go to hell. Shake that ass, bitch. Shake that ass, bitch. Real fuck behind curl shit, bitch. Come to the club and get a crap and shopping shit, bitch. <laughs> ah. Okay, so finished my hair, finished my makeup. I'm about to put my outfit on, show you guys. I'm in a rush because it's late and I still gotta eat. So, BRB. Oh, shit. I was not recording that whole time. What? Okay, sorry. Um. This is the fit, very cute, very cute. Um, this whole thing's from PLT, shoes are from Target, chain from PLT, um, yeah. Let me see, I think my makeup turned out good. I think my hair turned out good. It could be a little bigger, but um, dims the brakes. I gotta go though, my man's waiting on me. He's waiting to feed me. Um, I will talk to y'all next time thank you for watching my video see you in the next one subscribe peace